Yeah, so uh, welcome. Uh, my name is Peter Hunt. I'm a Signo uh, chair and a uh, in Kubernetes and also a uh, maintainer of Cryo. Today I'm going to be talking about a little bit Cryo, a little bit Kubernetes, but specifically about a feature that we've been working on in Kubernetes that'll help AI workloads, but also a bunch of other stuff. Real briefly, um, you know, this is the slot for Cryo's lightning talk, so I just want to pitch it a little bit. I'm not actually going to talk very much about it, but there will be a talk on Friday uh, with between Oh, can't see, shoot, beans. All right, um, sorry about that. So here's actually what I wanted you to be looking at. Um, so uh, there will be a talk on Friday. Um, so if you want to learn more about Cryo, if this piques your interest, please join it. I'll leave it up for a little bit. OK. So in the world of AI, there is the problem of moving around models. Like these models are really large files, gigabytes usually. And you know you want to be able to share them among your th containers, but you also want to be able to move them from node to node, and that's a tricky problem to solve. There are some existing solutions like, you know, they're, well, they're, you know, there are volume plugins in Kubernetes that you could theoretically put these models on and then share them between containers, or you know, there you could build them straight into the container image um, and then share them that way. That you know means that you'd have to share a base layer, which makes changing them a little bit difficult, or having you know different OSs that these images are running. So ultimately, really, we need a different solution. Um, so you know. Uh, what we, uh, luckily, we don't necessarily need to reinvent the wheel or create a new standard. You know, that we have something that, you know, a mechanism to be able to transport content between different um, servers on the internet. Um, this is through the OCI image and uh, distribution specs. Um, and so we can use the, we can leverage this in this case. All we need is a way to be able to plug an image from somewhere into a container, which is why, um, you know, how we worked, came to the work of the uh, OCI volume source. Um, so the name of it is technically OCI artifact and our image is actually not yet artifacts because the runtimes don't support it. Um, but right now it's just images, but you uh, theoretically eventually it could be also artifacts. But um, the idea of this is basically have a new type of a volume source in Kubernetes that you can um, use to uh, specify an image on an OCI registry in a similar way that you would an image in the container for the container. Um, and uh, the kubelet will ask the runtime to pull it if it doesn't exist on the node, and then cry, uh, the runtime current, uh, will put it into the container as a volume, and it'll be able to access that content. So we have the advantages of uh, OCI compliant registries and clients can all use and modify and move around and, uh, these images. This is a format that we're well familiar with. It's existed for 10, more than 10 years now. And um, it's, we like this a lot. Um, there's also all of this tooling that you know, can uh, edit, you know, we can take advantage of specifically in the runtimes that support it, you know, things like peer-to-peer -peer image sharing so you don't necessarily have to pull everything from a registry or um, lazy image pulling so you don't have to pull all of the contents immediately, theoretically. Um, and we, because it's integrated directly into Kubernetes, uh, we can take advantage of Kubernetes features like credential plugins, garbage collection, um, and the ensure process the Kubelet goes through. So we're basically taking advantage of what currently exists, but extending it to you know, cover this new use case. Um, currently, to use it, you need to use uh, Kubernetes 131 or later, or Cryo 131 or later. Um, there isn't yet supporting ContainerD. It's on the docket, but it's not yet there. Um, so you know, this is another pitch for Cryo. We have support for it already, so try it out and let us know what you think. Um, we have a quick demo. It's not really substantial because there's not really enough time, but, oh, this first. Oh, oh good, okay. Well, um, sorry. Okay, um, so that's spoilers. So basically, we're running a Kubernetes, uh, single node Kubernetes cluster. You can see this with kubectl here. We're just going to get the nodes. We have one node. Um, on this node, we can tell that the image volume um, feature is on in the kubelet, which means we can use this feature. Um, support for it is on by default in cryo, so nothing special there. Um, so we're going to create a pod that we're going to show here. Um, this pod, basically, it's pretty standard. We have. You know, really the only unique part of it is this, like specific volumes is an image, and then this reference, this is the image that we're going to be mounting into the container. Um, and you can specify a pull policy very similar to image, uh, images for containers. And then we're gonna skip forward, time travel pretty soon. Okay, we're gonna create this container, and uh, 
we're going to check it out. So it's unfortunately not going to be very in-depth. There'll be more on Friday, so definitely check it out if you're interested. But basically, you'll have to trust me. This came from an image. Um, it's very cool and it's very fun. It works. Trust me. Um, so yes, uh, check it out on Friday if you want to learn more or contact us on GitHub. Um, and otherwise, uh, thank you for joining.